Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to another Legacy Day on the Boston Roll channel. Today at the request of Patreon survivor Arkratos, I'm playing trusty old Bant. Bant has had quite the adventure in the last 8-10 to 10 months. When Oko and Dreadhorde Arcanist were banned, Uro was the heir apparent to the Control Throne. So Bant became the obvious place to start. Uh, Rug also on the table. Just blue-green replaced blue-white as the control core. And then the splash color was optional. And then Modern Horizons 2 brought us Endurance and Prismatic Ending, which really locked in Bant as the control shell that would be at the top of the control echelon in Legacy moving forward. Since that time, we've seen four-color bant with just splashes off of, of a single volcanic island to get your prismatic endings bigger or get red blasts out of the sideboard. We've seen four color with no basic lands, both a black splash for Witherbloom Command, a red splash for Expressive Iteration, five color bant, Yori on four color bant, Field of the Dead wins, Green Sun Zenith packages. We've seen this deck go all over the map, keeping that Uro, Endurance, Swords to Plowshares, Brainstorm core intact with all sorts of flavor on the edges. And time is a circle, so we're back at the top with trusty three-color back-to-basics Bant Control. This version of the deck gets Ice Fang Quaddle as a four of, which was one of the obvious places to start when people started brewing Bant eight months ago. And as there became fewer and fewer basic lands in the deck, Ice Fang Quaddle got worse and worse, because this card's pretty bad when it doesn't have Death Touch, and if you don't have Snow Lands, it can't get Death Touch. But in this deck with six basics, Ice Fang Quaddle starts to make sense again. Sylvan Library has been replaced by Life from the Loam, Expressive Iteration, various different ways to draw cards, Planeswalkers, etc. Prismatic Ending made Sylvan Library a whole lot worse because now every control deck can just remove this thing that used to be unkillable in main decks. And I've been low on Sylvan Library for a long time, but it makes sense in this kind of deck because you're not really doing anything special with your lands. There's no Wasteland. There's no Triome to cycle. There's no Field of the Dead. Loam doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. We're not playing red. We don't get Expressive Iteration. And what I really like about what this list is doing is there are three Sylvan Library. This is a card you want on turn two. And if you want it on turn two, you need to play a lot of them. I really hate the control lists that just have like one Sylvan Library in them. That just doesn't make any sense. It's a terrible top deck on turn five, unless the board is already completely stable. But having three of them, you're going to have it early. If it gets removed, you're going to have another one. And this is really the core card advantage engine of the deck. With Uro, of course, batting cleanup. But Sylvan Library is going to be the first wave. The deck gets back to basics, which helps against all of those other versions that I've mentioned. All of those decks with zero basics, or they have just like a random volcanic island that doesn't really help until after board. Back to basics punishes that. Lands is one of the most popular decks in the metagame. Delver doesn't play any basics. We've seen Cloud Post popping back up. There's a lot of reasons to want Back to Basics. Back to Basics is even good against a monocolor deck like Death and Taxes because they do have Rashadden ports. They have Caracas. They have Wasteland. They have all of these non-basic lands. Urza Saga. They play a lot of non-basic lands for a mono-white deck. And the non-basic lands are how they end up beating you in the endgame. Just having a Back to Basics to lock down that Caracas loop with Yorion is a game changer. I love Back to Basics. I'm glad we're back to here. And supporting those choices, we have all the obvious stuff. We've got two Teferi, two Narset. No Jace in this list, which I'm a little interested by. I feel like that card is really good. And I'm just going to run this list as is. But if I were playing this in a, a major tournament, I would probably play one less Kawaddle and one more Jace. 
that's just where I think these games are going to go. But I guess Three Sylvan Libraries does a pretty good Jace impression. I'll leave it alone and play it as is. One thing I want to mention is that Arkratos asked me to try to fit a minor Green Sun Zenith package into this list if it made any sense. Arkratos is really into that card, and I did make an effort. I had a build of the sideboard that had like a Scavenging Ooze and a Collector Oof, and the Zenith would replace the fourth Coatl, and then you just have an extra Uro, an extra Endurance in the main deck. But it ended up just not really making sense. Every card in this deck is here for a reason. You don't really have a lot of empty spaces in a control deck. Everything has to do a specific job, and Green Sun Zenith doesn't do a specific job. It does a number of jobs poorly. Like when your Ice Fang Coatl doesn't have Flash and costs three, it's a lot worse. When Endurance doesn't have Flash, it's a lot worse. Seeing anything for Uro is actually fine. I do like that line. I like that that's available, but it just doesn't make sense just for that. And then the the cute cards out of the sideboard, they were just worse than the cards I wanted to play. So uh, it it just didn't work. Sorry, Akratos. We can work on Zenith in the future for another league. But this time I am going to play just classic band control. The sideboard has all the things you'd expect, except ground seal, which is a really exciting one to be in this list. Let me get this on the screen. Ground seal, if you haven't seen this card. One in a green enchantment, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. This is really cool, because it's kind of like a rest in peace that doesn't nuke your Uro. This turns off reanimator. Uh, they could still exhume, but they can't animate dead or reanimate, because those spells target. It turns off loam. It turns off snapcaster mage. It turns off surgical extraction on your Uros. There's a lot to like about Ground Seal, and it's just a cantripping green enchantment along the way. Let's keep an eye on this one, because I am pretty excited to try it. This is a card that cycles in and out of legacy playability as the years go by. Like It, it gets really hot for like a month, and then people forget about it, and it shows up a year and a half later. And here it is. I hope it's good. Here it is. Trusty, grindy, bant Uro control. Let's jump into this league. I'm on the play in round number one. I'm going to keep this hand. I wish it had a single Brainstorm or Ponder in it instead of one of these five lands, but if you're going to cash out a five land hand, Uro's the way to do it. I'm going to play Flooded Strand so I can plow off of a basic planes if necessary. There are certainly matchups where this hand is absolutely heinous and we're going to die instantly, but there are also a lot of matchups where this hand is perfectly good. Okay, we're in a Tropical Island Zenith matchup of some kind. I think I just want to plow this thing in the end step. In case I draw Sylvan Library, I would don't want to be confused about what my mana is for. And it might be reasonable to fetch a dual land there. But for for that reason. Yeah, because basic planes really does suck, other than casting swords to plowshares. Like it doesn't cast Uro, it doesn't cast Coatl. I'm willing to acknowledge that wasn't great. And I probably had the information I needed to not worry about wasteland. Oh, I played against this person recently in a league, and they were on some sort of crazy kiki jiki birthing pod deck. That's probably what they're doing right now. But we have managed to convert into the turn three Uro, getting that fourth land drop accelerated. My hand is now full of gas with an Uro chilling in the graveyard. Leovold's not a card I want to play against. I'm going to pitch the Coatl to force this through. Or force this off the table. Whatever I do with my force. There it is. So I could have end step brainstormed to power out this Uro. And I can't do it now because of basic planes. Yeah, I should have fetched a dual land there. Alright, here's brainstorm. And I got another force. I don't think I want this tundra. Oh, this force is actually pretty bad. I'm going to get rid of force. And I'm going to regret my choices about the... Basic planes for another turn. Now Endurance can just clean up my Uro and I don't have a whole lot going on. They do need green mana before that's a play though. Reordain. Okay. I expect a bottom bottom off of this because they just brainstormed. And they gotta clear those cards. Yep, bottom bottom the preordain. Not a great use of preordain, but they must have been looking for the land or missed on the fetch land they were hoping to find. I'm gonna fetch in the end step. We get Tropical Island. 
I could cast Endurance right now, but I don't think I need to. Not sure that does anything. Oh, they have their own Endurance on the Evoke. All right, I'm okay with that. That's a two for zero. They pitched Birds of Paradise to get rid of my graveyard because of the threat of a card that already drew a card. My hand's not doing a lot. I mean, that did set me back. Don't get me wrong. It was a good play. But in the long term, that was pretty medium. They can get Death Touch as far as they know. But I can Endurance. Because the Coatles see each other. So they can fetch a basic and give their homies Death Touch right now. But I have Swords to Plowshares, which can break that up. Oh, we're just hard casting force. Okay. Do I care about this? No. I have a lot of ways to gain life in this deck. I'm not going to spend Swords to Plowshares on these Coatles when I know their deck has like Kiki Jiki in it. Okay. Sylvan Library is online. Now every time these Coatles connect is like half a card I can't draw. So there's a little bit of a different calculation there than there was a second ago, but I'm still not going to spend Swords to Plowshares on this. I should not have tapped out a white, though. That was really questionable. I can still fetch a Tundra, but I could have cast this leaving up white and had two plows available instead of one. Yikes. Oh, there's Birthing Pod. Like, I could just plow their two creatures in response here. All right. Let's see if we're going into the corridor. Yeah, fucking Night of Autumn. Okay. Good stuff. That's gone. And my top card is a land, which I'm, I know I don't want. I'll get Tundra and Swords to Plowshares, the Knight, before it gets any bigger. Waddle. I'm just going to main phase this. I have three drops that are worth playing. And now I'm going to pass the turn. And hope Birthing Pod doesn't kill me. When I played against this person the other day, they milled past a Corridor Monitor and a Kiki Jiki. They do have some sort of pod line in the deck. That hopefully sorts of plowshares can break up. Uh, ponder to start it off here. If the Squaddle attacks, I'm 100% blocking. Just keeping any creature out of play with the threat of Birthing Pod around is worth doing. They did not shuffle their library. I think they pondered in a brainstorm. The Endurance play makes a lot more sense. Like that early Endurance where they 2 for zeroed themselves to keep Uro out of play. If they're a combo deck and I'm not, all they really have to do is make the game last longer. And short-term card disadvantage matters a lot less. Okay, Noble Hierarch and Activate Pod. Stacking the Coatl. We got a 3-drop coming. Renegade Rallier. Regrows. Ice Fang Coatl. That's pretty sick. Nothing I can do about that. Good deck. How about a spell? A good one. I'll take a Ponder. Look at some more spells. Endurance Dress Down. Is Dress Down good? I can cast Dress Down and Endurance, but those things are not a combo, it turns out. If I do this, this seems like a pretty safe way to make sure I don't get potted out, but is that actually going to win the game? I'm not convinced, but I will take the extra time here. It sucks that Force of Will is two cards down, and I don't really have a way to get through it other than draw it. Okay. Potted a three. I'm gonna sit on the dress down for a minute. I don't know, that might be a huge punish. Call it our guardian. If that blinks Coatl, they get to draw a card. We could also just plow the Coatl. I kinda wanna save that for a Kiki Jiki. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna dress down right now. They can flicker Coatl, but then it won't draw a card. Flickered Coatl. This advances my plan of gonna cast Endurance and block. I don't really care about nuking their graveyard. I kind of don't want to shuffle their good cards back into the deck, so I'll just get a free eat on this while it doesn't have Death Touch. And this lets me untap into Force of Will plus Swords to Plowshares. At that second pod, it was a really nice thing to not have. Creatures have abilities. I think I just plow the Guardian. Break up their pod chain. Pods only activate as a sorcery. I guess I just start attacking and hope this Force of Will holds. Though, if they have a pod chain that can get through the Felidar Guardian being exiled, I'm in trouble. 
Off we go. See how far this goes. Quaddle. Draws a card. That's good. They have put quite a bit of life into these pods. But if they just pot up Uro right now, that regrows all that life, and then they can cast Uro from the graveyard right away. Draw some cards on the way through. Yup. Gonna have to force Uro on the way back in, because I don't have another plan for it. Ponder. I'm forcing Uro. I'm down a card either way, and this way they don't also have a 6-6 in play. They're brainstorming in response. If they can force this through, leave me hellbent with two pods and an Uro, that would be pretty scary. Noble Hierarch. So they can restart their pod chain. Ponder. Okay, I would love to find Narset. That's a card I'm pretty excited about. Ugh. Teferi is good, but the cards under it are not. And I could just take the Force of Will, attack, and we could play the same turn over again, and I can draw Teferi next turn. Like, I do really want Teferi, but I really don't want any of this other shit. Right, attacking with my creatures. Yeah, they can cast Uro, and I force it. Then they cast Uro again, and it resolves. And then they can pot Uro into Kiki Jiki. Is that even good? I don't know. Force of Will. They can hard cast Force back. That's not what they're doing. Replaying Uro. And then I have to ferry to bounce Uro. Assuming they don't have a lethal 5 drop. Which they might. Here's Uro again. It did produce a land. They have two cards in their hand. They can do some potting here. Hierarch's getting rowdy. I wonder if it's about to be sacrificed anyway. Corridor monitor, untap, hierarch, okay. Here's Teferi, which can bounce a row, and just don't have attacks right now. Just try to keep Teferi alive for a turn cycle and draw a good card. Uro is going to come in twice here. I've worked my way through their entire graveyard. Not that that is particularly important, but if I bounce or counter Uro again. They only have 17 cards left in their deck. Maybe decking them is the strat. But that seems tough with the birthing pods. Though I imagine we've probably disrupted their pod chain at this point with the Guardian being in exile. Uro's back. As we expected. Zenith for three. This is why I didn't endurance them earlier. Their Leovold is not in their deck. Uh, Grist is pretty good. Is Grist good? They're going to destroy Teferi or one of my creatures? Probably Teferi, right? Okay, that is an answer to Uro. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to kill. I get Teferi for a turn. One draw step to roll them all. Let's go. Something good. That's not it. Yeah, I needed an Uro there. Or something comparable. Activate Grist. Make a s insect. Kill a snake. I am going to block Uro to keep Teferi alive for a turn. It is the kind of card that can win a game on its own with a little bit of... Well, I guess not on its own. It does need some... Oh, I forgot to activate Teferi last turn, too. I just drew a card and... Oh, no, I didn't. They just attacked it for one. I was like, what the fuck? How's Teferi at one? It just took combat damage is the answer to that question. All right, deck. How about Narset into removal spell? Ice Fang Coatl. Don't hate that. I think I need to draw the card now rather than get clever in combat. Ugh. Maybe I should have gotten clever in combat. I'm going to hold these lands back for a brainstorm. They can just clear Teferi now with Grist if they want to, or just any removal spell gets rid of Coatl. And then Teferi's gone, and then their handful of cards is a problem for me. There is a Caracas in my deck that could waste a whole lot of time. Oh, they're just going into combat. I'm going to lose Teferi, but they're going to lose Uro. That's a deal. Okay. Put Uro in the graveyard. It can be recast. They're down to nine cards in their deck. Grist is becoming a liability to activate. And my Caracas would be so nice right now. If there's Brainstorm. Please don't have Hallbreacher in your deck. I sandbagged these lands for so long. Give it to me. Yeah, this is probably going to be a Force of Will. It's a good Force of Will. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not dead yet. Seven cards in their deck. Six cards in their deck. Yeah, that brainstorm showed up a turn too late. I needed the Teferi around. Five cards in their deck. They're not worried about decking. 
Well, let's get another brainstorm countered and then back it up. Oh, resolved. I'm as surprised as anyone. One, two, three, four. Green, white, blue. Exile, arrow. One, two, three, four. They can still attack for four. Put me to one, so I can't crack this fetch land. And if I force of will here, I also lose. Uh, there's no sweeper in the main deck. I can't burrow with the mana I have left. I'm going to brainstorm. If I force, I'm dead because they have four power in play. Oh, there's Uro. Well, do I have a land drop this turn? I think I do. All right. That's countered. Land. Fetch. I'm still dead, but I'm going to play my Uro. Out of pride. Oh, there's Swords to Plowshares. Yep, that Brainstorm showed up one turn too late. If all these same cards happened one turn earlier, Teferi would have protected the Brainstorm, would have found the Plow, which would have removed all their shit. And then they would have decked, rather than beat me. But instead, here we are. Turns out that uh, 2 for 0 on Uro, on like turn 6, whatever that was, was a huge deal. Because if I had an Uro going, they definitely would not have won this game. I love when... Like early plays affect late plays. Uh, so good. Okay, I want my Endurance. I want my Supreme Verdict. I want my Force of Vigor. It's annoying that I have to bring that in against a Bant deck. But Birthing Pot is a serious thing. Containment Priest. F yeah. I don't want Back to Basics. I might want Veil of Summer, but probably not. Ground Seal. I don't... I mean, they Renegade Rallyer, but... I don't think I want Ground Seal. Okay, back to basics. Force of Negation. Get a little thinner on Force of Will. Dress Down and Endurance and Supreme Verdict are all kind of counterspells for the things that matter a lot in this matchup. And I do want all the creature removal because of the pod half of their deck. Carpet is good, but it's also risky because they're a Leovold deck and Carpet just feeds Leovold cards forever. Yeah, I'm just going to play it like this. The last thing I'm considering is Veil of Summer, but I don't think I want it. Okay, I'm doing this. I'm going to have to mulligan this hand with Basic Forest for mana, and I'm going to keep this one. Keep this, send a dress down to the bottom. I'll be interested in that later. And I'm going to just set up a Brainstorm, which will probably Brainstorm away the other dress down, most likely. Noble Hierarch, okay. They can turn two Birthing Pod, but they can't activate it until turn three, because it does cost one colorless. I'm just going to pass here. This might be just ramming into Hall Breacher. Really hope they spend mana on something. Ooh. Uh, I could, I would dress that down if I had a Swords to Plowshares, but I don't. I'm just going to brainstorm in response. Ah, my very own. Okay. I'll put back two of these lands and then not shuffle my deck. Turn two Uro is so nice. Basically cheating. Birds of Paradise. Okay. I think I want to go for my own Uro here. Or I could Endurance them. Savannah. I'm just playing on dual lands here. And I could Endurance them. I could also end step dress down, turn off their mana dinguses. I think investing in Uro just makes the most sense, though. Let's just play this game together. Or, nah. I'm going to take a page out of their book, actually, and just make sure Uro doesn't happen. I'll set up my Uro next turn. And I can pitch Uro to Force of Vigor if they just do some crazy pod thing right now. Birthing pod confirmed. Time for a corridor monitor. That's an artifact, right? How far up the chain are we going? It is an artifact. Okay, please don't have Force of Will. I'm going to yeet my Uro to break this up. No counterspell, please. Brainstorm in response. Don't do it. Don't you find it. Ooh, what a relief. Okay. I lost my Uro for that, but hopefully it'll hurt them more than it hurts me. Containment Priest. Rewarded. I attack with my Endurance. I have Dress Down and Containment Priest, which I feel like between the two will cover most of what their deck can do. If they just Zenith here, we get a free lunch on that one. Unless we get Swords to Plowshared. Okay, we're getting Swords to Plowshared. 
I'll let them commit to the plow, and then I'll... Do I dress down now? No, I think this is probably Leovold. In which case, I want to dress down in my end step, so I can cast cantrips on my turn. Get Tundra and end step, dress down. Get to draw a card. Burrow is a nice one to sneak in while dress down's chilling. So I should attack first. There's my damages. And then hasty little Uro right into play. Let's hope those two cards in their hand aren't good. Hope that one card in their hand isn't good. Okay, Uro doesn't draw cards right now, but it does. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I think this is worth investing in. They get to draw a card, but if this works, so do I. Oh, they're casting spells. Quaddle. Okay, uh, Quaddle can get Death Touch, but I don't care. I'm here to push damage and draw cards. And cast Sylvan Library. Oh no, it has Death Touch. Smush, three damage through. And I'm not going to take the risk of... Get, trying to coaddle into my land drop to play Sylvan Library. Just getting Sylvan Library down is too important. And now their three card hand has to answer Library and Uro. Or else I have at least one of my multiple engines active. Odd is back. They did not pay life. They can get a two. I haven't seen a two yet that breaks this up. Okay. Coaddle. Makes sense. Right, Arbor. There are not many cards I wouldn't pay for here, but the second Sylvan Library is one of them. Put that on top, pay four to keep the land. And I'm gonna fetch blue, blue, green, green. I can get the tropical island, cast Uro. There's Uro. I do have swords to plowshares chilling. I have an extra land now. Attack with endurance. I can let them pod into like I could try to fight over pod, or just let them have this the uh the Night of Autumn, and blow up my library. Which I think I'm fine with, because this Death Touch creature is also the only thing keeping Uro from going to town. Eladar Guardian. Okay. Uh, that resolves. Flicker and Coatl. I think I'm okay with that. Get to draw a card. I can break up a Kiki combo with my Plow. Sacked their 2-drop. Paying life. So they left up mana on purpose. Do they have a chain that gets up to Kiki Jiki? So three untap, four untap, five untap. It's possible. Oh no, because they're at four and they have to activate pod two more times to get there. Yeah, they might just get Uro here and try to insulate. Rallier, record our monitor. Okay. This is cool. It's starting to make sense. Let's do it. They paid the, the iron price this time. They're going to get Kiki Jiki. Copy corridor monitor, and hope they don't have swords or force blue card in their hand. All right, seems it does not. Okay, game three. Seven minutes on their clock, eleven and change on mine. Okay, ground seal just got a little more interesting because the renegade rallyer being part of their untapped chain is not something I considered. If I put in ground seal, what happens to the rest of this deck? I have no effects that care about that in my own deck. What do I cut? Do I lose a Kawaddle for this? It's also a two-drop cantrip. Kawaddle is blue and green for Force of Will and Vigor, which is not irrelevant. Kawaddle's pretty low impact in the matchup, though, which is generally the problem with Ice Fang Kawaddle and why it doesn't see as much play as it once did. Okay, I'm going in like this. And I'm going to keep this very interactive hand. Yeah, Force of Vigor won me that last game. That turn they were going for it and couldn't find it because of Force. It was pretty great. Brainstorm improves every hand that it's part of, so happy to see that one. Oh, with the aggro end step Brainstorm. Surprised to see that out of a Bant deck, unless they have a 2-drop they're trying to resolve and need a land for. Like if they go Sylvan Library right now, then the Brainstorm makes a lot of sense. Nope. Just nothing. Do like me a Teferi. I'm just going to be patient here. I don't have to win this game. I just have to not lose it. And I mean that because they're a combo deck, not because they have significantly less time on their clock than me. But that's also true. Back for one. Not interacting with that. 
There's Sylvan Library. Okay. My read was kind of correct. I'm going to get Tundra to cast Brainstorm with. This hand is juicy. There's so many cards in it. I don't need two Endurances right now, and Swords of Plowshares is good, but I would like more lands. Maybe I don't need Dress Down until later. Yeah, I'll tuck the Dress Down for now, because Swords of Plowshares is the kind of thing that is always relevant. Tropical Island. And I'm going to ending the library. Because they have a creature, to fairy Bounce isn't that good. And this leaves up mana for Swords to Plowshares. Take another point from Coatl. Belladar Guardian. I'm going to plow Coatl. Get my Savannah. This is where they juke and they have back to basics. That would be so funny. Okay. Plow the Coatl. I'm trying to stymie their card draw. And then Teferi can bounce Felidar Guardian. Uh, missing land drops here kind of sucks. Sylvan Library hopefully will rectify that situation. If Teferi gets to stay around for a couple turns, this game is reasonable. And I guess I have Force of Vigor. I don't even really care about Back to Basics, which I don't think they have, by the way. But I don't care if they do. How about a land? All right, we got a land. Plus, and then play Sylvan Library. Holding up Swords to Plowshares and Force of Vigor. Or Force of Vigor and Endurance and Plow. I got a lot of action here. I can just make a move on this. I don't think I need to. I don't think that's the line. The fairy's at two. It's not like the Dried Arbor kills it. Right, they're making moves. Let's just mop up with Force of Vigor again. I liked doing that last game. But our Guardian is going to blink Birthing Pod. Uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. I don't think this is where I need to fight yet. It's gonna cost them three life to commit another thing. There are five I don't know about. Or are they starting up the two chain? The Coatl draw, okay. That doesn't bother me too much. I'll just play my Coatl. Didn't even have to pull the trigger on Force. Sylvan Library, feed me, please. All right, still no lands. Put on top. A4, plus to fairy, and I guess I brainstorm. All right, Sylvan Library and extra endurance and go on top. I have my land. I can plow two things. I can hard cast force. I can pitch cast force. I got a lot of options right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, Go ahead. I could just plow their two creatures right now. That actually sounds pretty good. Plow. Plow. Yeah, I'm just going to plow their creatures, and if they put a creature on the stack that I care about, I can shred the birthing pod. Second pod, doesn't matter. Oh, baby, force of vigor. I would feel bad if I felt anything. And Coatl in the end step. Begin the beatdowns, force of will back up now. All right, yeah, we're running away with this one. Ground seal. I don't need prismatic ending. I will take ground seal. Plus to fairy, then cast seal, draws a card, and attack for two. Uh, I don't have a second blue card. How important is that? I'd like to gain life, but I'd also like to make sure I don't lose the game. So let's let's move forward like this. Okay. They just have no plays and they're conceding. In game two, we saw what happens when. Two decks are doing mostly the same thing, but one has some sort of crazy engine in it where they just really dominated a stable board because their engine was online. And in game three and one, I guess, we saw where what happens when that engine is just taking up space. This game, for example, I was drawing spells while they were drawing redundant birthing pods with no creatures to activate. Crazy deck building giveth and taketh away. On to the next round. On the draw in round two. This hand's great. I'm going to keep it. Force will to stay alive. Tons of cantrips. Every card in this hand is either a counterspell or draws cards. Fairy Seer. Oh no. Did I accidentally queue into Popper? Whatever this is, it's going to be cool. And I'm pretty excited about it. We top bottom to their Fairy Seer. Ooh. I'm going to Prismatic Ending this thing. And I'm doing this because this is probably... Like, decks don't play Fairy Seer on raw power. It's feeding some sort of engine. 
Like, they were going to spell Stutter Sprite or Yuriko or something this turn that needed Fairy Seer to set it up. And I'm not about it. I will force a Will of Bitter Blossom here, by the way. Okay, that's not Bitter Blossom. That's Fairy Seer again. That's allowed. Okay, it is a ninja deck. Good to know. Caracas, happy to find that against the ninja deck. That really keeps Yuriko under control. A Ponder. Nice Sphinx Waddle is pretty good. Brainstorm's good. All these cards are good. That's how I like to play Magic. Don't shuffle the library. Play Caracas and ship it. They could still draw two cards off Ingenious Infiltrator, but I'm going to make sure Yuriko doesn't shred me into dust right now. Here they are. Here's the Ninja. It's the Infiltrator. They get to draw two cards, which I am worried about. But at least it's not Yuriko. I could just slam Narset here. That would stop the card draws. At least for a turn. It would clear the Uro that's on top of the deck that I don't really want also. Though that would also clear the way for Yuriko for a turn. Yeah, I think Narset is a future proposition. Options this turn include... Uro drawing the Uro on top of the deck. Narset to clear the Uro on top of the deck. I actually think it's Narset. I'm gonna... Yeah, I mean, Narset does stunt their Infiltrator for a turn. It lets Yuriko run wild, but if they don't have Yuriko, then this is the best play. And I don't want to brainstorm into a card I've already seen, if I can avoid it. Just need to keep the ninjas off the table, so I'm looking for swords to plowshares. I'm going to force back. They force pitching Fairy Seer. I'm going to get rid of my Kowaddle. If they care about this that much, then so do I. And I do want to use it. I know she'll die right away, but I need the action. I just found the plow I was looking for. But she replaced herself. She's going to absorb three damage and stop them from drawing two cards. All of that is stuff I like. They could also just attack my face, turn Infiltrator into Yuriko, and go that way. No, all right. They are attacking Narset. Best case scenario played out there. Okay, I can Swords to Plowshares, then Uro. I think I want to plow first, see if it resolves, and then I'll make subsequent decisions. It could force a negation here. Oh, spell starter sprite, that's disgusting. Brainstorm in response. Uh, force a negation does not stop any of this from happening. Okay. Force a negation pretty bad in the matchup all around, and I don't want this forest. Oh, well, I was right about spell starter sprite. Count that one for whatever it's worth. And then they're going to draw two extra cards this turn. Blech. Shuffle the library. Plow. No plow. Okay. Ninjas is so good. And this isn't just ninjas. It's fairies. Even more good. Just divination resolving and legacy is backbreaking. Okay. I want to brainstorm first. Like if they have another spell stutter, I would prefer that it hit brainstorm to Kowaddle. If there's suddenly also a Hall Breacher deck, I quit magic. Okay, uh, there's that. I'm going to blue-green Kowaddle in response. Kowaddle's in. Removal spell? Sylvan Library. Interesting. Okay. I'm not going to have a lot of life total to work with, but that's not a bad card. A forest, jam the Sylvan Library. I'm going to have to overpower this deck because I am... Oh, they did have Spell Sutter and just didn't care about Kowaddle. Deal. Yeah, Spell Stutter Sprite really fucked up when it gets off the ground in Legacy. And Coatl does not have Death Touch, and it turns out it didn't matter because they had a removal spell. That's what happens when you draw three cards a turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not dead yet. Uro will put me out of range of this. Here's Uro. Show me that fourth Spell Stutter. There's Force of Negation. I guess we're still playing the game, technically. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm at one. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. Yeah, that was a, a crushing. When your deck relies on counter spells and their deck relies on things you don't want to counter plus things that can't be countered, it gets tricky. I think Dress Down's good. Containment Priest is excellent. Supreme Verdict's excellent. Endurance is excellent. Veil is really good. Back to Basics, bad. Force of Negation, real bad. Carpet is pretty reasonable. 
Uh, I do want Flusterstorm also, I think. Yeah, just cheap interaction instead of clunky interaction. Shave on Force of Wills. I'm just playing to the board here. Everything that's a removal spell stays in the deck. Can I get rid of this last Force of Will? Do I want to get rid of this last Force of Will? Could bring in Carpet. I like having one Force of Will in the deck. Let's get rid of a bunch of extra stuff, bring in more efficient interaction. And here we go. I'm going to keep this. I like all these swords to plowshares. I don't like the one land, but that's what Ponder is for. Leyland of the Void. Okay. That turns off Uro and nothing else. Tundra. Hope you're not a wasteland deck. Brain. Ponder. Okay. The hand got good. Don't shuffle. Outcast. I'm going to plow that. I'm just going to plow it right now before they get any chance to do anything tricky with it. Make it gone. I know my top card is a land, which is what I want right now, so I'm not going to shuffle or cast Ponder. Now they're holding up the world's most obvious spell stutter sprite. I'm going to Ponder straight into it and then plow the sprite. Endurance, third land, Uro. Uro is much worse here because of the, the ley line. I do want Endurance, though, and the land that's under it. They're fetching land number three. Fairy Seer, you got it. Endurance's big old booty is so nice in this matchup. Something we don't get in Hopper, which is where you usually see this sort of plan executed. Endurance is going to jump in and block this fairy if it attacks. I have Force of Will and Plow to fight over this exchange. Basic Forest, and I think I want the Savannah here to get double green and double white. Do I need double white? Oh uh, yeah, Savannah looks fine. This is a 3-drop, so it doesn't get spell stuttered. I am going to tuck their graveyard, because I'm sure I don't. they don't want Prismatic Vista in their deck at this point. This looks like a fatal push to me. Or I guess it could be Brazen Borrower. That also plays here. Fatal push it is. I'm going to Force of Will Fatal Push. I'm just deciding what I'm going to pitch to it. I think it's Brainstorm. This Coatl... Uh, combat text is really relevant in this matchup. If my read is correct, one of the cards in their hand is Spell Stutter Sprite, which I would like to maneuver around wherever possible. This is the dance when you're playing against fairies. Ugh. Well, I'm going to lose the Swords of Plowshares here. Oh, that's not true. I can let them ninja and then plow the ninja. Okay. I can do that to play around Spell Stutter. All right, Endurance is gone. Go to Blocks. Yeah, just take one. They're not going to jam their ninja into that. Prismatic Ending. Okay. I can end Fairy Seer. Plow the Spell Stutter. Oh, that doesn't even matter. Shit, I should have made X larger. Fuck, I'm an idiot. All right. Uh, Yeah, X. Oh, wait, no, X is... No, X is one. Damn it. <laughs> My brain doesn't work is what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, if I had just made X larger, then that wouldn't have worked. Anyway, here's Ice Fang Quaddle. And I am going to play my land out. All right, they have one card left in their hand. Now it's two with their draw step. I have to imagine the last card in their hand was a ninja and hope they didn't draw a removal spell right now. All right, they attacked. I'll block. Just going to cast a ninja right now. Oof. Okay. Come on, deck, help me out. Uh, Quaddle is good. Redraw. Give me some action. I will even take a basic land in this spot. Bell of Summer, Dress Down, Basic Land. Uh, the basic land is there, but if I do that, I lose these two awesome cards. Could Dress Down into Veil of Summer and have... Like, will they even attack? Uh, any That's get blown out by any removal spell. Yeah, I'm going to draw the dress down, and I think I end step my dress down here. End step dress down. That way the ninja doesn't draw cards on their turn. And then next turn I can have a death touch coaddle with Veil of Summer protection. Not blocking. They could brazen borrow my dress down and draw a card, but then I would have dress down for the next turn. Okay, now I have death touch and protection. Two cards in their hand. I hope it's not removal spell counter spell. 
snuff out. One card left. Moment of truth. No spell stutter. No spell stutter. Big money. Okay. Two cards in their hand. Brazen Borrower doesn't work because I can just replay the thing. It has to be a removal spell. Uh, murder. Now we're going to start getting mushed. And the good news is that, like, remember when Ragavan was legal? This is basically a Ragavan game, but this is a four drop instead of a one drop. But it still feels bad, but at least we played a game around it. All right, ponder. Please don't have spell stutter. Okay, okay. This is all good shit. Now I shuffle the library. Uh, do I have a land drop? All right, I can play around spell pierce, so I will. The fairy, please resolve, please resolve, please resolve, please resolve. Jeez. All right, get this infiltrator out of here. I'm drawing swords to plowshares. And there's brainstorm under this. This is the kind of stability you're looking for in a matchup like this. Infiltrator's back, okay. Plus to fairy. And I don't think I brainstorm now. I think I just take my squeaky clean swords to plowshares and then brainstorm when I have bad cards in the hand. Because right now I would just be turning brainstorm into a different card. And you usually want to brainstorm when your hand's bad, not when your hand's good. Plow that. Brazen borrower in creature mode. Makes sense. Okay. Now I don't have a choice. I have to brainstorm. Another Teferi and a Coatl. I like all of this. Put back land brainstorm plus Teferi and then Coatl can squish this Brazen Borrower. I draw the brainstorm underneath and then shuffle away the land. Ambush Viper. Actual Viper. Which is great. In draft, uh, my friends and I just call any creature with flash ambush viper, and this one's actually a snake, so that's great. I'm gonna get a basic because base fan quaddle is still a card in my deck. Uh, we're cooking. All right, Narset, let's close this door. Sylvan Library, f yeah. Okay, these are these are some big hooks. I do need to find a way to win the game, which is basically like ice fan quaddle and endurance, since. The ley lines in play. I could bounce it, but they can just replay it at this point. If I can bounce it, get five cards in a row into my hand all at the same time, that's really good. And it's not like impossible to believe either. Okay, uh, Supreme Verdict is a good one. I'm going to put the land and the Narset on top. And I guess I should have put Narset on top first. Okay, I'm going to activate Narset and then activate Teferi. So this gets the other Narset. And Teferi can bounce Infiltrator. I know I could instant speed Supreme Verdict, but I'm not in a rush to do that. And I'm not in a rush to cast this Brainstorm either. Just not in a rush to do anything. Because I have this backup Teferi and backup Narset, I want to use the loyalty counters that I have on my existing ones before I cash out and play the others. I put back Forest and Flooded Strand. I'm going to put back Forest and Prismatic Ending. Now I'm going to want that removal spell eventually. Okay, top, top, plus to Fairy. And now I can brainstorm away these bad cards, and I know there's a fetch land on top. Get rid of Sylvan Library and Forest. Shuffle. And I think this is the Supreme Verdict turn. I guess it depends on what they attack. If they attack Narset, then she's dead anyway. Yeah, I'll see what they attack and then make a decision on what I'm going to Supreme Verdict or not. They have decided to attack Teferi. Do I want a Verdict? I can just Verdict on my turn. Yeah, but I guess their deck being this whole, like, Flash Strat matters a lot that Teferi's in play. Right now, I kind of wish that Carpet of Flowers was in my deck because that would let me make a fourth color to exile Leyline. Plus to Fairy, play Narset, activate Narset, get Swords to Plowshares. Just sent Caracas to the bottom, that's a way to use. Oh, I could just dress down and play Uro right now also. Put it into play. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm doing that. Right now, all the getting's good. There's Uro, and it's your turn. Alm of Obedience. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yep. 
was not ready for that. Okay. I thought we had this locked up, but uh, GG opponent. Well played. Yeah. That is a sideboard juke that you can certainly put in your deck. And they accurately assumed that I boarded out all my counter spells, and now we're dead. That was really cool. Well played. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the draw for round three, got to mulligan this no lander. I will keep this two lander. And I think of the cards in this hand, Endurance is the one that I want the least. Like, Force to Will does a lot of work that Endurance would do in Endurance matchups. And Coatl, and, and like, ending... If I knew the matchup, this would be easy. But it's game one, so I'm going to bottom the Endurance. Just going to keep everything that draws a card or interacts with my opponent. This is where their oops all spells. Basic Island Ponder. Okay. An opponent of class and distinction did not shuffle their Ponder. Land go. Marsh Flats. Okay, they're either a pure blue-white deck or they're up to something. Marsh Flats is not a thing that's normally in decks. Okay, this is Doomsday. Oh, th I hope this is that Tempo Doomsday deck I've been hearing about. There's this new deck that's hot on Twitter right now. Of It's Doomsday, but also plays Merktide Regent and the uh, Temporal Mastery? Temporal Manipulation? The Miracle Time Walk. It has that in it. And it is just very exciting to exist. Ponder. I am not going to flash an Ice Fang Quaddle and block this thing. Because that's a trick to get me to play into days. I can currently force a Will of Doomsday. Without getting dazed. Ponder. Dormus 2. They did not shuffle their library. I'm going to get a Quaddle down here. If they daze this, I'm okay with it. If they don't, I draw a card. It's a win-win. Pretty happy to see Ponder right now. Brainstorm's even better, though. I have a lot of bad cards for this matchup in my hand. Let's storm some bees. Okay, Endurance has been recovered. Prismatic ending, get out. Uro can hang out. Oh no, Uro is my green card to pitch. Uro cannot hang out. I'll put Basic Forest on top. How about that? And then I'm going to pass the turn, or do I attack? I'm going to attack. Their Doomsday, their life total matters. I guess there's a possibility they're still not Doomsday, but I'm thinking it is. This is where I get hit with Yuriko, with Caracas in my hand and a blocker available. Okay, they didn't Yuriko me. Rubland. I don't believe that's in the tempo builds of Doomsday. That's in, like, the Teferi builds. Dark Ritual resolves. Oh. What is this Maldrifter doing here? Is this some sort of Ephemerate deck? My goodness. All right. Maybe I don't know what's going on. I'm going to let them have Maul Drifter. Just ephemerate me into the dust. I can play Uro, put Caracas into play, and have Uro looming over the game. I can also just hard cast Endurance. I'm still playing around days. Yeah, I think that's the line. The Dark Ritual is crazy. Like, normally I would just be like, oh, maybe they adapted the modern Reanimator Maul Drifter deck for Legacy. But no, this is definitely some sort of actual combo deck. If they don't already have Ephemerate in their hand, the Spellseeker is going to go get it. All right, have fun. Yep, there's Ephemerate. Hoping they respect my white mana at least a little bit. I will trade off with Strix now that I know... Uh, this uh, Mall Drifter is not particularly close to killable. Okay, I'm going to brainstorm. Found some swords to plowshares. That's good. Prismatic ending is just real bad here. Caracas, and I can ponder. Get rid of these endings. I'm rating in response. Swords to plowshares. This is a fight. I'm ready to fight. Pluto Delta is scary. The fact that they are fetching makes me nervous. Brainstorm in response. Okay, that's not so bad. And they're able to put anything into this fight that they have, because if the Ephemerate resolves, they're going to draw four cards. All right, cool. 
just resolved ineffectively. And I'm going to shuffle this pile of prismatic endings and a redundant arrow. Cool. Ponder it. So now I have force blue card, endurance green card, and a follow-up play. Yikes. Don't like that. Guess I'm going to force this. Though I'm not excited about it. That's a two for two. They pitched a Baleful Strix to do that. They had the mana to hard cast it, which means they're going to do something else this turn. Intuition. Wheat Molasses. <laughs> uh, Demi got a Revenge in this deck. Lake of the Dead. Uh, good thing I have Endurance, I guess. Okay. Um, pitch cast Endurance. P pitching Endurance. I think the Uro is my best chance to do anything this game. Like, I have to keep up with this 5-4 flying. Oh, this deck. Maybe they're not a Doomsday deck? I, I don't know. It's impossible to know. They did not shuffle their library. I take 6 here. And I play Uro. Blue, green. I'm going to leave up white mana. I guess I should have left up a green. Probably could have done both. And I am going to leave Uro in the graveyard for next turn. I could pick it up with Caracas, but if I could replay it again this turn, if I had one more mana, I would pick it up with Caracas, but I don't. So, here we are. An intuition for Demigod of Revenge, Lake of the Dead, to make it happen. Amazing. Attack for six, put me to seven. I'm not dead on board. Yet. They're fetching. Seven mana was not enough for whatever they were planning this turn. Gary! I'm at one? How? Oh, oh. Oh, right, this costs five, not four. Yeah, I'm just dead. <laughs> dead for exactly the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Okay. Uh, good to know. This deck is wild. Veil of Summer looks important. Uh, Dress Down seems pretty important. Bluster Storm. Tame and Priest. Big money on that one. Do I want Others Worn Canonist? I, this might be a situation where that hurts me more than it helps me. Endurance seems really important. I feel like I do want back to basics, but I also don't know where I would put it deck space wise. Uh, Prismatic Ending did not have a lot of text in this matchup. I can shave that one. Surgical Extraction does hit the Demigod pretty hard. Any deck with Intuition, generally Surgical, is something you're interested in. Supreme Verdict does punch through Ephemerate Tricks. I feel like... This deck is built like a combo deck, but maybe actually isn't one. I mean, they have powerful interactions and synergies, but not really combo, you know? I don't know. I definitely think I want Back to Basics involved here. Their engine just seems so busted that it would be hard to overpower without some sort of lock piece. Shave three of the forces, play to the board, and bring in more efficient counter spells. And then back to basics is my hammer on a relatively stable board. Yikes. This matchup is something else. I have a pair of endurances here. This hand is distressingly fair for how unfair their deck is capable of being. I'm just going to hold up. I'm going to represent swords to plowshares and make them do stuff. Unfortunately, grief doesn't really care about that. Okay. Ponder is a relief. When they played a land that didn't make white on turn one, that was really nice for me. Take my wins where I can get them. They did not shuffle their library, though. Okay, now I actually have Swords to Plowshares. That's even better than representing it. But I do have the awkward situation right now of fetching Tundra, which casts Coatl, and Plow, or ignoring the fact that I want white mana, just get an island. Yeah, I think I have to pretend my deck doesn't have back to basics in it for now and just cast my spells in the best way possible, which is Tundra. Waddles in, draws to Fairy. How about a land? The Fairy collapses this deck. Uh, my life is shit. Okay, I guess I'm passing the turn. This is not a situation where you cast a Waddle to hit a land drop. I need to leave up Swords to Plowshares here. And they know my hand is seven spells right now. Let's hope I get some respect out of that fact. Unfortunately, if they know how to stack their grief triggers, it just doesn't matter. This is going to name Swords to Plowshares. 
probably. Okay, Cabal Therapy. It's bad. Really bad. Because every card that they'd want to name is in my hand, except for maybe Force of Will. Yeah, Swords of Plowshares is gone. They can flash back Cabal Therapy, lose their Baleful Strix to hit double endurance or like really whatever they want here. We can take so many cards out of my hand. Uh missing that land drop is brutal. Okay. Um do I coaddle in response here? I think so. Just want to make sure I get this extra look at a land drop. They know what's in my hand and that it's not good anyway. Just don't draw the third endurance right now. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Brainstorm's a good one. Wish I had a mana to mess with this Cabal Therapy, but I don't. Let's see what they're scared of. They could name Endurance for the two-for-one here. Maybe they're worried about Teferi. Maybe they're worried about Back to Basics. Be hard to walk away from this two-for-one, though. Yeah, Endurance. There they go. And another Strix. If I draw a land, I'm ramming Back to Basics. Okay, that's not Back to Basics. I will Brainstorm, though. Okay, interesting. I'm going to tuck Teferi and Back to Basics on top of the deck with Teferi above the Basics. And I can attack with one of these Coatles. I'll leave the other back to block. Like, I don't want to get into a damage race situation because they have so many, like, cool engines, including Ephemerate. That if I attack with both, then they attack with one. I'd rather just be able to block and trade and dissuade any attacks at all. Okay. Uh, I have to just cast the cards that I have. Here's Teferi. Missing land drops, then getting three for one. Bad times. Teferi really does collapse their whole plan. Like, Ephemerate doesn't work. Intuition gets a lot worse. Very cool. I'm going to bounce their Strix. Go ahead, have an extra card. I'll attack with one Coatl, in case their hand has a Demigod in it. I want to keep Teferi around. Sucks that I have two back to basics now that it's actually scary. If they have another Cabal Therapy, they're going to just accidentally get a second card. Ending my Teferi. Okay. They have two fetch lands. That could be two basic lands. Yep, there's one. Show me the basic island. Can't wait to brainstorm these back to basics out of here. Rix is back. There's one of the forces I left in. Brainstorm. That's a wall of swords to plowshares that I'm pretty interested in. I'm going to fetch a basic island and just slam this Uro. Oh, redrew back to basics. Cool. That is a blue card that I'm pretty happy to pitch, though. That next Cabal Therapy is going to be the end of my career. Surgical Extraction Uro. Okay. Well, Uro's gone, and now they know perfectly well that the next Cabal Therapy is going to end my career. Spell Seeker. Is this the Force of Will? Do they? Oh, yeah, it probably gets Cabal Therapy. Yeah, force this. Let's go. If they can win a fight over the force, I'm just dead. Okay, Uro's gone. My hand is just Swords to Plowshares at this point. I'll continue dealing one damage. I'm not going to play this forest. I need to represent something here other than Swords to Plowshares. If that was a white land, I would play it. But it's not. Which is Cottage. So they're going to get Spellseeker, which is going to get Cabal Therapy, which is going to put me to Hellbent. And if they have an Ephemerate in their hand, it's even worse. Like, Plow Spellseeker in response here. Gets Ephemerated, they get two spells, then I die. There's no, not even Uros in my deck anymore. This matchup, holy shit. You got a second Ephemerate with the first Spellseeker trigger. Now I suspect this one will get the Cabal Therapy. If they play more than one. Maybe it's just in the Spellseeker package. Nope. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. Okay. I bet they named Swords to Plowshares. This would have been a great turn to draw a Veil of Summer, but I did not. All right, that's all my removal out of the deck. My Uros are out of the deck. Not a lot going on here. Teferi's a good draw. Oh, Dress Down's also a good draw. Now I'm attacking with all my creatures. I need to get this game over. Okay. Trade it off with one of them. Here's Forest, and then in my end step, I dress down. Okay. Now they can ephemerate their Spellseeker that doesn't have text. Small Battle 1. Good news, they only have 7 cards in their hand. I will say that the classic 3-color Bant deck 
just relying on Uro and Sylvan Library for its extra cards feels very different when you're behind the steering wheel than the decks with like Loam and Witherbloom Command and Expressive Iteration. There's just a lot of other ways to gain card advantage that I am feeling the lack of right now. So there's one Endurance left in my deck that can win the game. There's two in the graveyard. I guess I would target myself with Endurance if I draw one. Oof. There's Teferi. Do they bounce their own Spellseeker here for the maximum value? Yeah, they do. Good idea. Dress down goes away in the end step. I need something like Narset, I think, to make this game competitive. Uh, not Force of Will in two lands, that's for sure. Shuffle. Got a Dress Down that I can't ever use. And my answers to Teferi are also no longer in the deck. Here's Dress Down. Oh, here's Veil of Summer. <laughs> yeah, there's a Teferi. My Prismatic Endings are all out of the deck. I just didn't see a target for this in the first game. A lot of black mana being tapped right now. Is it time for the god? Are you a god? Yeah, it is. Just one, but that's plenty. They know where all of my plows are. All right, deck, how about a spell that matters? Okay, that's among the better spells that exist. Brainstorm. Okay, Endurance is also one of the better spells that exist. And I can Veil of Summer to make sure it resolves. That's not getting better. Endurance, target myself, get all my plows back in the deck. And my win conditions, my other Endurances. Probably too little too late here. But we gotta... We got, that was like the one draw that I would keep playing for. I guess Endurance, Narset, maybe Teferi. Seeking some spells. Throws to Plowshares, that's a good spell. Completely irrelevant spell, but... Like... My creature's a 3-4, and you're attacking with a 5-4. I don't think you need to cast that, at least not right away. But if you have this bevy of riches, I guess it's fine. I shuffle my deck, got all these plows back in the mix. Well, might as well cast this. Back to basics. They have two lands currently tapped. They don't have any non-basic white sources, so if I can get this ephemerate on the stack, that's the last ephemerate they're going to cast. But I'm running out of time. I don't think I actually can win, because even if I draw a plow, they have to ferry and they can ephemerate. Yeah, this game is not winnable. Oh, do they have the Grey Merchant to get me again? Oh, it's just grief. Bummer. This Supreme Verdict kind of does it. Yeah, okay, I have one draw. Wasn't Savannah. All right, that was an insane deck that seemed tailor-made to defeat my deck. Good stuff. Wow. Important lesson here, maybe I'm just supposed to always bring in Ground Seal in sideboard games because this deck doesn't have a secondary engine or a secondary real win condition. There's no Jace, there's no Loam, Witherbloom Command, etc. There's no Field of the Dead. Like, Uro is very important to actually winning games with this deck, and maybe I just need to always have in Ground Seal in sideboard games to make sure my Uros are safe. The AI is learning. On to the next round. I'm on the play with... Either the best hand I would mulligan or the worst hand I would keep. Like, this is the same hand I kept in game one that worked out pretty well, or round one, but Narset is a very different card than Uro. I'm going to keep this against my better judgment. At the Pro Tour, I would mulligan this. Just saying. Just hope they're a fair deck. Okay, uh, this is a deck that my hand isn't the worst again. They said they're a fan of the channel and hope they don't get rolled on YouTube. Well, I have the same concerns right now. Um, I'm going to take the one. I'm more worried about Eidolon of the Great Rebel. See what their follow-up is next turn. Okay, Coatl is interesting. That's an incentive to fetch basic planes for the possibility of getting up to Death Touch at some point. Start a tapping mana, then change their mind. If they... Just like fire off a lightning bolt in combat or something. All right, that's not what happened. Suspended Rift Bolt. Okay, that changes things a little. I'm going to get a non-basic land and cast Kawadal. I want to advance my board state if they're stuck on one mana. And now I have two plows. Okay, I'm going to let them go to their turn. Let them cast Rift Bolt. 
I don't like how exposed I am to Price of Progress right now. I'm just going to plow now before they gain the extra life. They did get two damage out of that Swift Spear, which is one less damage than they'd like to get out of every card. But, all right, come on, Teferi off the top. Let's freeze this Rift Bolt. Oh, Uro. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah, Uro is the card that uh, makes burn a lot worse than it once was. Blue, blue, green. Here comes Uro. Let's gain some life. And put in Caracas and bounce Uro. Like, Uro's pretty far from escaping right now, and I like the gain three life every turn option. Them being stuck on one land is kind of scary because it means their hand is six spells right now. The critics are skewered. I'm going to start with Uro again. Uro. Trigger. Putting in the basic is nice. Insulating against the, the pop. But also just Uro twice this turn. I think I like that. I'm so exposed to price of progress, though. Really not a fan of that. One, two, three, four. I'm taking eight from pop. Okay, basic land off the top was nice. Now my creature has death touch. I'm not going to attack now. I attacked last turn because I had plow up for a goblin guide. But I'm going to leave back my death touch blocker now that I don't have that anymore. Oh, they just conceded. Okay. Uh, must not have been impressed with their options in their one land hand over there. I was pretty worried about that game, actually. Okay, Hydro Blast. I got two of those in the sideboard. Hell yeah. Bluster Storm. Dress Down can turn off Eidolon for a turn of debauchery. Force of Vigor hits Eidolon and Sulfuric Vortex and Roiling Vortex and all of those things. Endurance can block all of their creatures. I don't really like Dress Down. Turning off Eidolon isn't enough for me. I do like having Counter ma Magic, just to make sure my Uro gets to ride. I guess Sylvan Library is pretty heinous in this matchup. Like, I never even want to tap out to cast it, even if it is on turn two. All the removal, all the blue cards, all the forces, the two Hydro Blast, and it's basically just protect the king on Uro here. Does that mean I want Ground Seal? Am I going to learn a lesson from my previous rounds? Unlikely. And Teferi is pretty medium. It does lock Rift Bolts in suspend mode and stuff, but yeah, maybe Ground Seal is better than Teferi. That sounds so weird to say out loud, but I'm going to try it. Canonist also has text. It stops their biggest flurry of burn spell turns, but they also have a lot of creatures in their deck, and the game's probably going to get to a point where I'm trying to cantrip into answers. Uh, the sand does not do anything important right away. I do like the brainstorm and the ponder. I'm going to keep. This hand might just get rolled over, or it might find an Uro quickly and win the game. Those are the two things that this hand can do. Lava spike. Okay. Always glad that's not a creature. Basic land. F yeah. Lead on the ponder. Okay. Well, there's Uro that I was looking for. The prismatic ending on top with Teferi underneath it. There's that. I do have the answer on top of my deck. I have to get a non-basic to do this. And I have a lot of green mana in my hand, so I will get Tundra. And you have to just kill Eidolon. There's not a world where you're just playing the game and ignoring it. Doesn't happen. Not this early. Spike. Three cards left. Two cards left. All right, Uro, I need you to save me right now, homie. This is such a nice life buffer. God, I love Uro so much. Burn is one of the worst matchups for traditional control decks because you have to just counter. Like, all their spells are the same. You can't, like, pick your spot and, like, does this kill me, does this not. You can't assess threats on any sort of normal way. It's just, like, you have to counter enough spells to be alive, and they have so many spells. But, yeah, just having this main deck, repeatable source of life gain, so good. Might not be enough, but I do like it. And I'm at five. I think... Okay, if I fetch, I die. I think that's the position they've put me in here. Brainstorm, let's find a counter spell for this. All right, good, 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 good. Um, if I put back 
basic planes and tropical island. And I can play tropical island. One, two, three, four. Yeah, if I fetch, I lose. So I'm gonna pass the turn for now. Yeah, I, I have to play around Fire Blast being the last card. There's not one card that deals five, to my knowledge. Okay, I'm at two. And then next turn I can Uro with the necessary protection. Green. Searing blood. Oh, okay. Counter target spell if it's red. Splat. Okay. Uh and I'm not gonna fetch here. Exile, exactly the correct number of cards. And now I should be good because in addition to going to five against a hellbent opponent here, I also have the ability to swords to plowshares my Uro to surprise gain another six. They have to like deal five to me right now, which I guess price of progress technically isn't out, but I can gain the extra six. And if I start attacking here, I think the game just ends. Here we go. Moment of truth. All right, I'm at eight. I'm going to put in fetch lands and not Caracas because the ability to fetch basics saves you one damage against pop. Narset, find me a counter spell. Let's go. Force of will. That should. All right, that gives me the comfort to play the Caracas. Because now I'm not dead to Price of Progress. This match brought to you entirely by Uro. You can see how quickly we would have died without a card like Uro. We were in range and had to play around multiple cards in their deck for a turn cycle, even after Uroing. Yeah, it, it's... Burn is so bad for traditional control, but thank God for Uro. On to the final round. On the draw in the final round, trying to salvage the positive record. I'm going to keep this. Island Ponder Keep, right? Though I do have the two cards in my deck that only make white mana, and white mana is the splash color. Oh. Well. Basic Planes might be the right card to have in this opener. Depending on what happens here. Goblin Matron. Oh, this is like a Goblin Stompy thing. Okay. Cool. Oh, the, the rarely seen Chrome Mox Go. Is there a Goblin with Flash that I'm not aware of? I'm just going to hit this Chrome Mox. Yeah, if you're going to Chrome Mox go, I'm going to strip mine you. I'm going to... I could ponder off of a non-basic. Yeah, I think I want to ponder here off of Tropical Island. Just want to get my spells set up. These are good spells. Which one do I want in my hand? I think I want the Prismatic Ending in my hand. Land on top. The third mountain go. What the hell is happening over there? I got some options now. I can Uro to pull ahead. I can Teferi just to be on the board at all. I know Ice Fang Quaddle is my next card down. I think I want to fetch Basic Island and play Uro here. Just, this is the most generically good positive thing I can do for my own board state. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to need to react to them yet. And I'm not going to bounce my Uro. It's almost in escape mode. I guess that's not true because I have... All my white lands in play. But getting the basic island there means that even if they blood moon me or blood sun me. Okay. Just a nasty naked little Cranko into my Caracas. Put it in your hand. Brainstorm. Definitely. Alright. I like Force of Will. None of these cards are really going anywhere. So. Prismatic Ending. Endurance. I think I play the Teferi here. And. Bounce nothing to draw a card. I think I like that better than the other options. They're one turn away from... Oh, I was about to say they're a turn away from Muxus, but I'm glad there's no Cavern in play. It's easiest Force of Will of my life right here. So they have Cranko and two Mystery Cards in their hand. Their Mystery Cards were not cards that were cast when... Like, over the course of this game. Which makes me nervous. Like, what cards are just still in your hand on turn 5 in a Goblin deck? And because I have my two white sources, I do not have access to Uro right now. But I can ending something, plow something, and cast Endurance. So Muxus would have to be pretty big to, to blast through. Or they could just keep casting this Cranko. Goblin Lackey, okay. I'm going to bounce Cranko and play Endurance. And I'm going to target nobody. 
Like, I want my graveyard there, and I can prismatic ending this. Lackey. Oh, that's really good. Plus to fairy. This locks down City of Traders. It locks down one of my colored mana as well, which I don't really like. Is City of Traders even important? Locks down my Caracas when I know they have Cranko in their hand. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. All right, I guess I'm just attacking. Okay. They are pretty insistent on casting this card. And I will insist on putting it back in your hand every time. Okay, sweet relief. Green, green, blue, blue. Here comes Uro. That's not a basic forest. If that was a basic forest or something that generated basic forest, I probably would have jammed back to basics, but it's not. So I'll just keep up my white mana. They probably would have liked this goblin matron that they pitched to the chrome mox without tapping it. Would have changed the texture of this game quite a bit if they had a ringleader available. Or another moxes. Oh, they do have another moxes. Okay. Oh. Hardcast pyrokinesis? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that this hand is so awkward. They're not doing anything that they want to do over there. Okay, found a basic forest. Means I can attack. Put in basic forest. Do damage. Then I can Narset. Get a swords to plowshares and then fetch basic island. There is one left. And then one, two, three. Go back to basics and plus to fairy. Just want to make sure I don't get muxist, or at least do as much as I can to not get muxist. Ring later. Okay, there's that one. I hope this is too little too late. Uh, they found another ringleader and a chieftain. Yeah, they can't attack and kill any of my planeswalkers. Ancient tomb, you got it. They could put Narsa down to one. I guess it's fine. There, you got it. I'm not going to plow that. Brainstorm. Force and negation, not a good card in this matchup. And Prismatic Ending has outlived its usefulness. Fetch. Attack with Uro. Still deciding what I'm going to do with Teferi. I guess bouncing the ringleader's fine. Every hand, card in my hand's already an instant. Just less material in play is better. I can plow multiple haste goblins, even if they do Muxus this turn. They would need to hit four haste lords. And then I can still block with endurance. Okay. Uh, Chalice of the Void, Chalice of the Void, Mountain and Skirt Prospector. Prospector's in their hand. Rome Mox resolves. Bet this is going to pitch the Kranko. Yeah! He finally found a home. Okay, there are two. I can play my endurance. Again, target nobody. And I can plow Skirk Prospector, which puts them up to three if this resolves. And then I have a lethal attack and I have Teferi in play. So there's nothing they can do about it. Weird game. This matchup's usually pretty scary, but I don't know if they kept a week one or what happened there. Force of Vigor, Supreme Verdict, Dress Down, Hydroblast. Wow, look at these Hydroblasts. They just keep showing up. Hydroblast, Hydroblast, Containment Priest. That nixes Muxus, which is. The big card, their deck is built around putting Muxus on the stack. Uh, Force of Negation, not good. Force of Will is like part of a package. If they have Cavern of Souls, then Force is bad. But if I have Back to Basics that keep their Cavern tapped, then it's good. I think I'm going to leave some number of Forces in and one Back to Basics, but not bring in the other. It's kind of rely on my removal and dress downs. The Force of Vigors are for things like Chalice and Blood Moon. Yeah, I just think Sylvan Library is not going to line up well here. Oh, I want the additional Endurance, just big booty. And yeah, this, is, this is why I don't really like Sylvan Library, and I'm willing to believe I'm thinking about the deck incorrectly. Like People who play classic Bant Sylvan Library decks, please let me know in the comments. Sylvan Library is a card I don't want against violent attacking decks, but it's also half of the draw engines in this deck and we've seen what happens when this deck doesn't have a draw engine it looks pretty embarrassing that's kind of a, a tough push and pull to playing this card anyway i'm gonna board out my silver libraries and hit submit here we go uh, this hand can answer lackey i'm gonna keep it that's always step one when you're on the draw against goblins you need a hand that can answer lackey anything else that happens after that point 
we can figure it out together. But right now, we gotta answer Lackey. And luckily, the card that answers Lackey also answers Chalice of the Void, which are the two scariest things they can do on turn one. Going to mold to five. Ancient Tomb, and... Yeah, there's the Chalice. Okay. Uh, there's Swords to Plowshares. I'm going to play my non-basic land first in case they follow up with Blood Moon, which I'm not really sure is even a card that they play, but I'm ready for it. Rabble Daddy. Okay. This is a curve that I can respect. I have to spend a turn answering Chalice, and then I have to answer Rabble Master, and then I have to figure out whatever's left over. That's what's going on right now. The good news is I don't think this is a Blood Moon deck. And this dress down is actually really interesting. Okay, I'm actually just going to pass the turn and dress down. Like if they go for a main phase ringleader, because it has haste, that's when you would want to do it. And then I can counter that, take the haste off of it. They don't get a rebel token this turn. Nice. All right. Just like we drew it up. Bad news is we're playing on non-basics. Dress you right down. Bad news. More bad news. Didn't find a land. I really need land number three right here, and it needs to be white. Like, I need to be able to Prismatic Ending and then plow the Rabble Master. Uh. Okay. This game probably just ended, because we missed the land drop. We were already behind. This was a really good start, but missing land drop there. Unacceptable. They have one card left in their hand. Gotta beat this board. Taking a lot of damage right now. If their one card is Muxus, we are Buxtus. But if their one card is Muxus, then it's not a land. So they need Mana Source and Muxus in their one card hand. Oh no, they're casting spells. Oh no, is it Ringleader? Oh god, it's Cranko. Might be worse. Okay, deck. Help me out here. Wait, that is a land. What does that do? I can... I have to remove Rabble Master because I'm dead. I'm dead to the other thing too. All right, I need to ponder into another Swords of Plowshares. Let's go. Prismatic Ending does not do it, because the things I need to remove cost three and four, respectively. Shuffle into Plow, exactly? Nope. Okay, we're dead. Uh, maybe I can trick them into letting them Supreme Verdict. Nope, it's not going to happen. All right. Yeah, missing that land drop last turn removed my outs. If we have land three, we can Plow Rabble Master last turn. We bounced... Uh, Cranko with Teferi this turn, take a little bit of damage, and then we start arrowing. But, yep. Tough. On the draw, is anything different? And that Chalice was really strong, to the point where maybe I want more Force of Will in my deck. What would I cut if I did that? The Ice Fang Quaddle? The card is pretty low impact. Okay. I'm gonna add an extra Force to the deck, so I have four Forces that can answer Chalice now. Plus, being on the play makes Chalice less scary in general. On the play, with a zero lander, has all my best cards in it, but this is not a hand I can keep. Okay, I'm going to keep this one. It fails the answer Lackey test. I'm going to bottom one of the lands. I can force Lackey if they don't have Cavern. But I'm going to ponder off of Tundra, because Tundra casts my removal spells. Brainstorm. Ugh. I'm going to shuffle this. All right, shuffled into the one card I wanted anyway. The moto bug pays off. Okay. Um, I'm going to force this because I don't have another answer. Like, draw step plus ponder is five looks at a removal spell, which I play seven of. And this is exactly the type of calculation that I don't want to have to be making. So I'm just going to force this thing. And I'm going to draw plow immediately. Okay. Drew dress down. Feels a little better. But uh, I'm going to ponder. And look at that. There was no Sword to Plowshares present. I'm going to shuffle this also. None of those are cards that I actually want right now. Ooh, passing the turn. I like that. Third land, I like that too. Okay, I can just pass the turn now. I can dress down if they go like Ancient Tomb, Ringleader. I can Brainstorm and Coatl if they do nothing. Chalice of the Void. All right, I'll Brainstorm in response to that. That's an easy one. Hydra Blast Swords to Plowshares. Those are not answers to Chalice of the Void. I'm going to put Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, I'm just going to put the two cards that are not playable under Chalice away. It's going to play carefully there. 
I'm going to fetch basic island, basic forest. Having death touch on my Quaddle is not irrelevant in this matchup. Motobug. Caracas also plays in this matchup. I'm going to attack because the creature they can attack with is a 2-2 this turn. Like any creature they could attack with is a 2-2. And I don't have death touch. Chieftain. Yep, that's a 2-2. Yeah, this Chalice. Uh, my deck has a lot of answers to Chalice, but that doesn't matter if I don't draw them. Okay, Teferi is a very good card. I'm going to leave the Caracas untapped because their deck does have a number of relevant legends in it. A Tropical Island and Bounce Chalice. Guess I could have waited on my land drop. Then my Guado would have Death Touch. If they go for Muxus here, I'm going to dress it down. If they replay Chalice, I'll just plow the... Chieftain, if they just attack to fairy, I'll let it die. Yep, wish I had. I sequenced to fairy in a way. I was like, I'll save my land drop in case I draw another basic. And then I was just like, nah, we're good. There's the chalice. I'm going to plow in a response. Four cards left in their hand. Okay, now I can give Koatl death touch. But if I dress down, then it loses death touch. Weird. I want to neither attack nor not attack, so I'm just going to pass. Because if I dress down, it won't have Death Touch anyway. If they just play another Chieftain, I imagine they're not going to attack. Okay, here's the dress down from Moxus, and I know it can't be Red Blasted because of their Chalice. The land is not helpful here. And spell? Okay, Force of Will is a good spell. Now I have Death Touch with Force of Will up anyway. They have another Muxus. I have Force of Will for that. This game is tenuous to bad, though. Like, I need Uro. That's specifically the card that I need here. I would also accept Narset, but Uro, definitely. Yep, trade off with my, my touch guy. They have three cards left. Containment Priest is also good. I am going to Quaddle now, because I have a lot of Sorcery Speed spells I want to cast. Oof. This chalice is so good. Expressive Iteration and Witherbloom Command are both really good against chalice compared to these traditional three-color decks as well. Chieftain, okay. I can battle that. If they also have Cranko, that sucks. So it can make a bunch of gobbos immediately. And I'm going to bounce Cranko in response to its own ability, so they only get one goblin instead of two. But this is quite an engine. They will slowly grind up more and more goblins every turn, and next turn they can cast Cranko twice. Yeah, I need to remove the Chalice or the Haste creature this turn. Come on, Uro. Show up. Stabilize this game. This is your job. Uro. No! Uh, it's been a very long time since I lost a control matchup to Chalice of the Void. This feels like 2018, and that's because I'm playing a deck that feels like 2018. It has Uro in it, but... Just control technology has advanced so far past what I'm doing right now. God, did they draw Muxus? You should just cast Cranko twice. All right, or just kill me with Muxus. It's all good. All good. Maybe they'll miss. Zero goblins. Not a one. I will say Sylvan Library would have been really good in this matchup. Like It digs through Chalice. It's a repeatable reload. Maybe I'm just not in Sylvan Library's wheelhouse right now, and losing because of it. Okay, they do have Blood Moon in their deck. They have Goblin Matron and Goblin Rabble Master, and they get to Matron for something else. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, if they have a red source, I'm just dead. Okay. All right, I'm dead here. Um. Well, I guess I could bounce Muxus, which feels terrible, but it is technically allowed. Okay, cycling, gem palm incinerator, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, I'm dead even if I bounce Muxus. This doesn't even matter. Okay, I'm dead. A 2 and 3 final record. Losing record with Bant, that doesn't happen often on my channel. Big fan of this deck. I like the play patterns, and normally we're able to scrape together positivity. And this just felt weak. I mean, we played against some weird matchups like Muxus, Stompy, whatever the hell that Demigod of Revenge deck was, Ninjas that was also Helm Leyline. This was a weird league. 
And maybe if we just played against Is It Delver and Bant Mirrors five times, like if we planned for a winner's metagame, maybe things look differently. But this felt really underwhelming, just on power level. Ice Fang Coatl just doesn't really hang with the format the way that it did a year ago. This card always looks like it's going to be good, but then it mostly isn't. It's actually really hard to get Death Touch on it if you want to cast your spells like Uro. Like Endurance, it Narset's green or blue blue one. Endurance is green green one. Uro's green green blue blue. It's hard to do that if you are fetching basics early to turn on your Coatl. And Sylvan Library being your engine, that that just hurts. Like I, I just think that I've mentioned it throughout the league. Like Witherbloom Command, Expressive Iteration, Life from the Loam, they all come off the top. Don't use your life total, immediately generate card advantage, and off you go. Those cards just all feel better to me than Sylvan Library, which I was a big fan of Sylvan Library for a long time. I just think that Legacy has moved beyond it. The white decks can remove it. The other decks can pressure your life total in a way that it makes it kind of bad. The games where I had it in play, obviously, it was great. But even then, like the first library draws another library and it's just a card you don't even want. I don't like it. I think it's necessary in three color band, but I just really don't like it. I would definitely change at least one of these into Jace if you wanted to play this version. I would probably have two Jace in this deck. Like Jace is a card advantage engine that I am excited to rip off the top and I am excited to have in my deck compared to Sylvan Library, which I have made clear my opinions about. I don't know that main deck back to basics is good. I think you want that in some matchups, but it's like bad enough in others that you don't want it. Maybe turn one Sylvan Library, one back to basics into two Jace, and I think this deck gets a lot better right away. That also solves the Uro problem, where if your Uro gets surgical, you just can't win the game anymore, because Jace is a very real win condition. All of that makes sense to me. Th that's where I would want to take the deck. If you want to play three colors, if you still want access to back to basics, if you don't want to go into that red splash or black splash direction like all good maybe you don't own enough dual lands which is a perfectly reasonable concern there are only four dual lands in this deck as it's configured that is a big draw to the deck but i do not think that three colors keeps up on the power level with the other decks in the format the way that it used to i want four colors in my band deck some sort of splash to pick up the slack keep the cards flowing keep the removal flowing and that's how I feel about that. Akratos, thank you for asking me to play classic Bant Control. It's nice to revisit the roots and get a feel for, oh, why am I not doing that? That looks so smart. You got all these basic lands. It's like, oh, because basic lands are less powerful than non-basic lands. And decks need to be powerful more than they need to be synergistic right now in Legacy. And that's just the world that we live in, for better or worse. I don't have a strong opinion whether that's better or worse. It's just a fact. The days of Legacy where you could stick a Sylvan Library and just ride it to victory forever, I, I think those are past us. Uh, your cards need to be higher impact, and you need more of them. I'm going to sign off there before I ramble any longer about the current state of Legacy or Bant. This deck is perfectly fine. If it's a budget choice, or you just like the play patterns of Back to Basics, or if Back to Basics makes a lot of sense in your metagame, if you have just like six local Cloud Post players and Lance players, sure, play the Back to Basics in your main. But if you have access to any card, any deck, and want to play a Bant core strategy, I would be looking at the red or black splash versions. I'm going to sign off there. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.